Good evening, everybody. Uh, good to be back with you tonight on Wednesday night. Uh, I'm thankful to have the opportunity just to uh, be able to share some thoughts with you tonight as we're in Holy Week. And so what an honor it is to just be with you for just a few minutes this evening. And uh, I'm honored to have my worship pastor and my assistant pastor here at Kingsway Church with me, Jason Banks. Thank you, sir, for being with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it'll be awesome. We haven't done this in a little while. and it's, I'm, it's been a minute. I've missed these these times of getting to do these things with you, and uh, yeah. it's always good to, I always enjoy getting to be with you for a few minutes. Same, absolutely. Awesome. Well, first of all, I would like to encourage you uh, to, to come out this Sunday. It is going to be a wonderful time. This is uh, Easter Sunday, and uh, also at our church, we're having a, uh, on Saturday, we're doing an Easter egg event for the kids, and there'll be a food truck that's here and things like that, and so we just encourage you, if you have children or know some children, we always put on a very nice uh, outing for our kids. Our kids are important to us, and we want to have them to be able to ex have a good experience in being in church, and of course, the goal is not Easter bunnies and and eggs with candy in them. I mean, that's just to encourage your kids and bless them a little bit. But the real reason is to get you encouraged about being on the church property and coming out for Easter Sunday and getting ready to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for the coffee dock. Oh, yeah. That, well, I haven't had it yet. so. Yeah, yeah I, that'll be great. Uh, come out and get some coffee. I, I think they're going to have like... Full, uh, me, full menu. Right? Full menu, yeah. Hot dogs and various other things and stuff yeah, like and that. Our, so the be kids cool. will eat free. They yeah, get a true, voucher. True. The kids will get a voucher when they come on the property and and uh, they'll get... So they'll get to eat, hunt Easter eggs, play in the, play, in the new playground. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. We're going to have a great time. But... As awesome as that is, it's even more awesome to get to Sunday because Absolutely. I kind of feel like that everything we do throughout the, the entire year, I mean, every service is unique in its own way, but I feel like that everything that we do is with the purpose of getting to this particular Sunday because Resurrection Sunday is a culmination of everything that we do. It brings kind of ties it all together and brings the purpose to why we do what we do. And so um, as we're here Sunday, we're going to enjoy some things. I have a great message from the Lord that I believe that actually months ago the Lord gave me, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So let's just get into this. Let's talk about it. We're in Holy Week, so let's talk about, you know, what happened and why this is important to us. So my analogy that I was talking to you about just a little bit earlier, and I'll share with everybody that's watching this evening. So I'm a sports buff, right? I like sports, and, and really it's any kind of sports. I just, we just got done this past week watching the Masters, and, and, and we watched uh, Scotty Scheffler uh, win the Masters, 25 years old, and, and at the end it was so awesome. At the end of the, you know, when they're interviewing him about everything, he, he says the reason that he does what he does is so that he can glorify God. And in his win, he said, this is to glorify God. And I was like, man, that's so awesome. I, I love hearing sports athletes, you know, recognize that the reason that they can do what they can do is because the Lord's blessed them. And so that's cool. So I'm a sports buff. So I started thinking about this. You actually said this a long time ago. I don't know if you remember it or not. But, um, you know, we were, we were talking about... Uh, uh, you know, the Super Bowl. I'm a big NFL fan and the college fan and, and all this, and so I enjoy that. But when we have the Super Bowl, there's something that takes place on that Super Bowl. All throughout the year, you have teams that play, and then they get into the playoffs, and they one by one begin to eliminate one another. And they get down finally down to two teams. We just got done with the Final Four, and, you know, we, we saw that uh, in the championship game, it was Kansas and North Carolina. There can only be one winner. That's just the way it works, right? You don't have a half a dozen teams that go, well, we're the champions, right? It comes down to one. Well, not, not yet. Maybe one. <laughs> well, <laughs> true. I mean, you know, with everybody wanting to like a participation yeah. trophy, yeah. right? But I don't like that. I don't like participation trophies. If I lose, it gives me an encouragement to get better so I can win. Mm -hmm. So there's, don't, don't send me no nasty comments <laughs> either because you like participation trophies. I don't. I'm just telling you. All right, but anyway, so we get to the Super Bowl, and at the end of the year, when the, when the game's played, there's one winner, 
whatever sport it is, and they get crowned, so to speak, as the champion. You said this one time, one time before, and it, and it made me think. You, you, you mentioned that Easter or Re- Resurrection Sunday is your Super Bowl or like the, a Christian's Super Bowl. And I thought about that, and I thought, yeah, it's, it's really the moment where we are identified with what Christ did for us, and that's the moment that he truly became the champion, our champion. And even though he was here on the earth, Pastor Jason, he did a lot of wonderful things. We can see his life, how he healed people, cast out devils, healed the sick, raised the dead, you know, cre- uh, uh, performed miracle after miracle. All those were awesome. But he was limited. He was limited by his, his body because he could only do what he could do. And then he was actually limited spiritually to, for salvation for us. He could be a blessing, but he couldn't save us until something else happened. And he had to undo what Adam did. You know, Adam kind of messed everything up. And I, don't be too hard on Adam because if you were in Adam's shoes, I, I kind of believe you would have messed it up too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if, if Adam hadn't messed up, somebody would have. Somebody would so. have. It just happened. His, his name just happens yeah. to be Adam, yeah. right? Yeah. So Adam messes it up, and then Jesus comes and has to do what Adam did. He had to be born into the world as a man. He had to walk on the planet. In Jesus' case, most scholars say around 33 years. And uh, he had to live a sinless life, and then he had to die. That, and that's an interesting point. Pastor Jason, he had to die willingly. He couldn't, um, he wouldn't have died otherwise because the Bible says by sin, through sin, death enters in. If there's no sin, there really can be no death. So he kind of had to willingly let go of his life so that he could die because that was the big moment. That's the big game Mm -hmm. is when, when Resurrection Sunday came. So when he's resurrected from the dead, it literally changed mine and your lives and everybody else's life. Mm-hmm. Amen. Absolutely. We, uh, we love Christmas, right? Like especially Christmas time uh, here at Kingsway Church. And we look forward to the dinner and uh, everything that comes with just being in service to celebrate Jesus' birth. But there's nothing like Easter Sunday. Right. And you just look forward to it, right. like I do. I know you do, yeah. you do too. We just look forward to it. And it's not because there's an influx of people or uh, anything, you know, or our celebration the day before or what have you. But the just being in service on Resurrection Sunday morning. There's an excitement. It, there, you can feel it yeah. in the, in the air. It's a tangible, a tangible thing. Yeah. And you know, you talk, you talk about uh, Adam, right? Well. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And then he was risen. Right. And nobody in history has ever right. legitimately raised from the dead. Right. Like Jesus uh, rose from the dead. Um, you know, I was uh, holding Ari earlier. Right. And uh, just cues can be. And his little fluffy hair that he's got going on. And um, I've heard uh, Jill say this uh, many times. Oh, I just, you know, talking about our kids. Oh, I just want to eat their face. Yeah, just, oh, let's just look at them. I just want to eat their face. And, you know, we're not going to eat their face, right? Right, right? But it just shows how ingrained that we are in love yeah. with these, these, uh, this next generation. Right. And, and the, the children that God's gifted us with. Well, how we feel about our children, our grandchildren, is how God feels about us. Yeah. And he, he just wants to eat our face off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how, he, that's how passionate he is. He loves us so much that he came here. Yeah. He lived among us. Yeah. And he, he, it, we, we gloss over it sometimes. Yeah, I think we lose the... And, and just, just because we get used to things, you know, we, we tend to take things for granted. We take for granted that the... the the significance of him coming and him knowing what he was ha- going to have to go through. Jesus knew, mm-hmm. as soon as he had a conscious thought as a as a as a child, 
He knew what was in front of him. And every day that got closer and closer to that moment, Jason, you, you know he had to be like, he's still a man. He has feelings. Yeah. He has the sense of dread in the sense that he knows what he's going to experience, the pain, the suffering, the, the shame. And, and worst of all, all the sin of the world was going to be put upon his shoulders. He sensed and, and felt the magnitude of that. We, we if, if you knew you were, you know, like a convicted uh, felon that was sentenced to die and he's on death row, he feels the magnitude of his death approaching every day that it passes. He's a little closer. That's bad enough. But it's also, he doesn't sense the, the weight of the, literally, of the world on his shoulders through their sins. Jesus knew all of that. And I think the thing that really... When Jesus, at, you know, when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. when he was praying about, Lord, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. But nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. I, it wasn't that he was just, it was just total dread of the, the physical agony, that as well. But here's the thing. He knew at that moment for the first time in his existence, which is forever, we can't even really fathom how that feels, that he's always been and always will be, which blows my mind. Yeah, me too. But for the first time in his existence, he is going to be separated from God the Father because God cannot look upon sin. And for the first time, when the, when the weight of the world, the sin of the world was on his shoulders and he had to go to hell to pay the price for all of our sins, at that moment he knew that he was going to be separated from the Father for the first time. And that, to me, listen, folks, that's exactly what, to me, what hell really is. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in a literal hell. I just have enough scripture that gives me the, the insight on that. But that's, you know, you believe what you want. But that's me. But that said, to me, Hell really is hell because of the separation from God. Even the worst sinner on the, on the earth in their life, they still sense a presence of peace. There's still a presence of God in their life. They just ignore it and, and bypass it sometimes. But when it's no longer there and you're truly eternally separated from God, the feeling of that must be like just terrible. Yeah. I mean, indescribable. Oh, I, I can't imagine. And that was the before you even mentioned the garden. That is what that's what popped in my my mind. And you know, physicians will tell you that under that much stress, that you, you know his blood vessels were yeah. essentially yeah. Uh, bursting. Yeah. The, the, instead of the just clear sweat, it, it was, was blood. It was blood. And uh, there's lots of lessons to be learned from that moment in time and that scripture the bible says that he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast away mm -hmm. so he separated himself mm -hmm. and he kneeled down to pray and he prayed earnestly and his sweat was as great drops of blood falling down to the ground yeah so it was it was a passionate time but he was withdrawn from those that he loved so he could be in fellowship and seek god and we don't know exactly what he was praying but i can imagine uh, the many thoughts and you know just like in our daily lives we need to separate from everyone mm -hmm. and have that alone time of being alone with God and um, that that realization come to me um, actually this past couple of weeks uh, when I, I work alone most of the time and to pass the time I'll listen to podcasts I don't listen to music too much but I, I do listen to podcasts and um, it was like the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. How am I going to speak to you if you've always got that in your ears? Mm. I need to, to get away, to, so to, that's, to, to it's, withdraw. So what you're saying is it's, it's good to listen. Mm. There's, time, there's a time for that. Oh, absolutely. Because it, it is enrichment, educational, mm -hmm. encouraging, inspiring, all those things. But also, there has to be a time of separation so that he can speak. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and it just, uh, you know, and I was speaking with another pastor uh, yesterday, and we were talking about hearing from God. And most people, they just like chase after signs, and, and they want to hear the audible voice of God, but they want to hear the audible voice of God when they only listen to God through Scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's how God is going to speak to us, yeah. through Scripture. How many times, Pastor, have you sat down and read a verse that you've read 10,000 times and God speaks something to you yeah. new yeah. through that. Yeah, that you just, you've, I mean, even though you've looked at it 
dozens, maybe hundreds of times. Yeah. You you just didn't see it. Yeah. But all of a sudden you see something and you're like, oh my gosh, I, how did I not know that? Yeah. How did I not see that? How yeah. how's that, how is it that I'm just seeing that right now? Well, yeah. because the Holy Ghost speaks to us and can like literally show you things that like are there and have always been mm -hmm. there, but you just for whatever reason you glossed over it. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the, the situations that change in our lives, and then the <clears throat> the Word of God will it, it it shows us through these different situations how to handle these things, how to, we can rely and depend on God mm -hmm. for these things. Yeah. You know, as we're getting closer here, and again, we talked about like it's such a buildup. It's like the anticipation of this day that we celebrate. It's, it's like, uh, just like in the natural, we do the same thing. If your favorite team was, you know, winning in the playoffs and keeps winning, there's this buildup of anticipation. But until you win, you still haven't won. You know, you can win a game, but there's still work in front of you, and you know that. Now there's anticipation building up to that. Mm -hmm. I heard Kenneth Hagin say this many years ago, and it was like, it was honestly kind of one of those moments that you're talking about. It was like a, a revealing moment to me when I heard him say that, and I know this religiously sounds, if you're a really religious person and you hear this, you, you might almost gasp when you say this because we put such emphasis on the cross. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the cross. Mm -hmm. I love the cross because of what it represents, what it led to. Yeah. But I don't worship the cross, Jason. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it is not, the, and this is what he said, and I know sometimes it's hard to hear, but he said, the cross was not a place of victory. De and I, that sound, and people freak out over that sometimes. They go, what? What? Of course the cross was the place of victory. The cross was actually the place of defeat. He died mm -hmm. on the cross. Yeah. If it had stopped right there, we lose. Mm -hmm. We don't win. We, if, if it stopped on the cross, if he died on the cross, and that was the, the culmination, that was it, that was as far as it went, then we lost in the championship game. Yeah. And I'll just say this. There's, I don't know if there's anything worse than to lose in the championship game because if you feel like I'm so close, the yeah. <laughs> the Bengals this year were in the yeah. Super Bowl, right? They have been three times in their existence, three times in the Super Bowl, all three times they've lost and barely lost all three times, and it's almost agonizing because it's like I'm so close to being a champion. Yeah. So that's what it would have been like if the cross was it. Mm -hmm. The cross, Brother Hagen said, was actually a place of defeat. He said, but where the real victory was, was in the resurrection from the death that the cross created. Yeah, absolutely. The cross brought death. Now, we, we appreciate the cross. We reverence the cross because we know that was the, if I could say it like this, it was the vehicle to the end that justified the means. Or it was the means that brought us to the place to the end. So we understand that was what got us to that place. But if he doesn't, if he's not raised from the dead, then there's no victory. In fact, about it, it says that in 1 Corinthians 15. If, if you know, if this is all there is, I, I don't have it in front of me to read it, but he essentially says, if this all there is, I am of all men most miserable, the Apostle Paul was saying. So he's saying there has to be a resurrection. Yeah. And then when he was resurrected from the, from the dead on that, on that Sunday, what we, we, we use as Sunday. I mean, what we, we, we uh, celebrate on Sunday. It changed everything. It, at that moment, he has, he's been crowned the champion, and, he's, and it's not anything he has to do each year. The Super Bowl, they got to play it every year to get a new champion. Mm -hmm. He's a champion one time for all, forever, for every single person that ever lived or ever would live. And that's what I, I just, to me, it's like when we build up, we're getting excited because yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like the, the memory of watching that Super Bowl all over again and him winning every single time. Yeah, every single time. You remember in the 90s, uh, UK, and they were playing Duke, oh, and I wow. remember exactly where I was at, exactly who was there, 
and they were poised to win that game, and then Christian Leitner just comes in Chasing. Why did you have to with that, that shot. And I, 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 did, I've buried that memory deep. Yeah, I had, I, I hated that guy. I know. Like, I hated that guy. Even though his name was Christian. Yeah, right. I'm like, you're the, you're the anti. Your name should be anti-Christian <laughs> Leitner. But I, I'll never forget that because we were poised to win that championship, and it was heartbreaking. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge sports guy. Right. right? I know. But, but I get it. But you can be passionate about those things, and you want to win every time. I know you want to win. Oh, I know yeah. Pastor Wells uh, wants to win. You guys are in it to win it, period, no matter what oh, it is. Hey, we were just talking about that. Pastor Wells, he, we were talking about when he played basketball. Yeah. I mean, he is a... I'm here to win. It doesn't matter if it's a Christian oh, league. Yeah. Basketball uh, he was game. my pastor, and I wouldn't want to play against oh, him. Like, <laughs> he's for real. He's for real. Yeah, he's legit. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's like the the NFL. Like I, you know, I don't have a horse in a race. I just want everybody to have fun. Like yeah. you want to root for the Cowboys? Awesome. I don't care. I hope they do well. Yeah. You know. So, but yeah, it's you want to win, and this we win. You know, we talk about. Uh, you know, we can't wait to get to the end of the book because the end of the book we win. Well, who cares? Yeah, because you win you, anyway. You, we've already we've won. We've already won we've because already, he's already won. We, we've already won because he's already won. And 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 honestly, that's a that's an incorrect way to look at your Christian walk. Yeah, because you're always it never comes. R- right, until, it, ne- it never until does. until the very end. It never does. Yeah, until until he's. To we'll, we see Jesus Christ. Yeah, we take our last breath, yeah. and then at that point we win. Yeah. Well, how about we win every single day yeah, because yeah. he lives in us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the uh, kingdom series that we, we just came off of a few weeks ago uh, was one of my favorite series because Jesus Christ spoke more about the kingdom than anything. Mm-hmm. Everywhere he went, he spoke about mm-hmm. the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And we're to be the kingdom of God here and to show that resurrection, to so, show that so life. So that means show the victory. Yeah, so I don't long for some time in the future. Right, Like, right. I already have that victory. Yeah. And I posted on social media this morning a quote from a sermon that I got uh, uh, to share. Uh, are we chasing after blessings or the one... That does the blessing. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes it feels like we're chasing after that blessing. Right. But when we chase after him, when we seek him, when we hunger for him, all that other stuff just, just comes, comes. Yeah. It just comes in line. We used to play with a band uh, when we traveled, and um, these guys were the real deal. Uh, they, uh, I, I grew up, I was a little kid in the 80s, and the Christian bands, like Mylon, Petra, all those guys, they'd give an altar call and a thousand people would come up and get saved. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I've been yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, I was after that. I was a generation after that. And there was one band in particular that we, we played tons of shows with. And that kind of thing had kind of fallen away. But the thing that I saw them do was stay with individual um, people, or groups of small people and lead them to Christ after those um, shows and concerts. Mm-hmm. They were being the kingdom of God yeah. where God had called them to. And trends that change, things change, they're always going to change. And we're to utilize, it's just like, like this. We just changed our backdrop. We, we, just, we changed it, we made the platform bigger. Right. Okay, we, we have the screen. The lyrics look really cool. Right. God's given us a creative mind. We've let the world take over all creativity. I, and I hate the, that. It's, it's ridiculous. All the best creativity in the world it, are in the hands of kingdom builders building this world's kingdom. Yeah. When God has called us to creativity, right. he's called, this is not something we've taken from the world. The world has stolen this type of thing from us. Yeah, it, it tried to steal the good music. It's tried to steal all creativity. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, you could go back. It could be they stole plays from us. They stole movies from us. They stole the music from us because we're not cultivating that in our culture. Yeah, so and We got, should be the innovators. We should be on absolutely. the cutting edge. Uh, of this, because it draws people to Christ, and people can say, "Well, this does this doesn't glorify God." Well, okay, you answer for you and work out your own salvation. We'll do, we'll do us. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do us. And what what's the thing about it that people have to realize is this: is um, if we're not, if we are not, you know, I, I'll just say it like this. I, I'm just trying to think of the right analogy. You know, Jesus used the analogy with Peter. He said. 
I will, you, you, uh, you follow me and you will be a fisher mm -hmm. of men. So he used the analogy of bait. Because yeah. that's what it takes to catch fish, right? right? Do, do you think they were using Christian bait? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I, I mean, they were using bait. They were just casting their nets, right? Right. right. But that wasn't some Christian net. Right. They were using a right, net. Right. 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 It wasn't just you know let's let's we're going to stay within the confines of our little world. That's why that yeah. I, I don't care what people look like. I don't care where they've been. Hey, hey. I don't care where they're at mm -hmm. in their life. If we can get them in the room or in a, in a moment to hear the Word of God, that's what changes people. It's the Word. Yes. It isn't me. It isn't you. Yep. It isn't your setting. All, these, all this is bait. Re this is just bait. Yeah. And once people get it, I mean, and don't get me wrong, we, we take it and we use it and we do get in moments. I mean, you're all's worship. On, on the KWC worship team is, is just outstanding. And it gets me into a place uh, where I can just get lost in the presence of God, and I want that. But um, at the end of the day, I'm here, yes, for two, two main purposes. And I know you are too. Two main purposes, and that is to edify the believer, mm -hmm. to strengthen and build them up. The Lord always told me that that was primarily a big piece of my ministry throughout the years. But in addition to that, it's to cast a net so that I have an opportunity, and there's just strategic ways to do that. We, we try to be strategic about how it is that we're going to be a fisher of men yeah. and pull men into the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what Jesus was doing. That's why he did what he did, and he's taught the disciples, and he's teaching us within the Word to do the same thing. Yeah, and the, the one uh, constant thing that I've always heard, not since we've just been here in this location, but the one thing that I've always heard from people that come to Kingsway Church and those that have come and stayed is I've never felt more welcome mm -hmm. in a church. I've never felt so loved in a church. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to um, change the way that I look or um, forget about, you know, you know, I don't have to feel bad about past Right. mistakes right. and they I just feel welcome there yeah and it doesn't mean here's a, a just a quick quick n s note to that it doesn't mean that there might not be change might not be necessary in your life yeah exactly now, I don't mean yeah. just by your appearance or anything like that I don't care about any of that right, right. but it doesn't mean that you might not need change yeah. you might you probably in fact you probably do yeah. <laughs> everybody you know yeah. we all are a work in progress oh yeah so you probably do need change but I can't win you if that's the first thing that comes out of my mouth is you need to change, you need to stop doing this, start doing this, you need to get rid of that, make sure you're doing it. That's not what wins people. What wins people is what you just said. They feel welcome and loved. And, and, and then when they come in, they feel welcomed and loved. Now they're willing to hear what you have to say. Oh, absolutely. And then when 100%. they hear, the Word of God and the Spirit of God will change them. Yeah, and I've seen that change. You've seen that mm -hmm. change in people. They'll come one way and Absolutely. then oh, they'll stay and oh look a year later you remember when how so and so came in oh, yeah. and yeah. How, what the mess that they were in well, look at them now look what God uh, has done with them 100 through them it's uh, that's what it's all about that's what it's all about and that's what folks it's what resurrection Sunday that's what we are leading up to it isn't just that Jesus was raised from the dead that 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 there was a purpose behind that there was a reason behind that it was because it brought us it changed the game he became he was crowned the champion and that means that now he rules again the big game it was he the big, the big game. game he won the big game and it and it's always settled there's not a moment that the devil somehow or another is going to steal that victory from him it's already done it's settled it's forever our victory and now it's just a matter of us uh, 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 appropriating that victory implementing that victory making sure that we've received that in our life so that we can be everything that he wants us to be and that was all because he came to the world lived a sinless life willingly gave his life on the cross and then he allowed God to raise him from the dead through all of that and as God raised him from the dead he rose victorious and that means just like you said we now are victorious not not when we die and we'll that'll that'll be we'll be victorious in that too yeah but we're victorious right now in our lives. And he did all of that because he loved us enough to go through the agony and the stress and the pain and suffering 
and the separation from God because he loved us and wanted us to be a, have a place back with the Father. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope that uh, you are, are encouraged to know that as we celebrate the resurrection uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this Sunday, that it is your victory as well as it was his victory. And so, folks, I want to invite you to come out at Kingsway Church. We're up on Providence Hill Drive, right below the Providence uh, Hill Apartments. Uh, come up. We just would love to, to get to know you. We'd love to have you be a part of our services. I, I know you can watch online. I know you can watch on Facebook, and I appreciate that. Uh, but sometimes, folks, don't let, don't let a social media broadcast be a, a replacement for what you can have in person. There's, it's, I, I've had the opportunity when I'm out of town, I, I get to watch you or whoever preach, but I enjoy it, okay? But I enjoy it so much more when I'm here. Oh, absolutely, because this isn't a spectator sport. No, it, yes, yeah, exactly. It is participation. Yeah, absolutely. We, we want everybody. And when I mean, we're here, not going to give you a trophy. Right, we, <laughs> right. No trophies, no participation trophies, but you will enjoy it. And uh, so we just want to encourage you. Come out 1030. Uh, we have, we'll have one main service uh, this, this Sunday. And so uh, we just would love to see you and love to get to know you. And I believe that you would really enjoy it. So come out and be a part of uh, celebrating Resurrection Sunday with us. I promise you it'll be awesome. The worship will just be outstanding. And I have a word from God that God, I, I actually had a message put together actually two or three months ago. And the Lord stopped me. And as I was reflecting on the message, the Lord told me, that is your Easter message. So I, I, I know it's going to be great. Come out also Saturday to our, um, our children event. There'll be a petting zoo here for the kids. There'll be an Easter egg hunt. There'll be food and celebration and a playground uh, where the kids can play in the playground. It'll be a great time. And I looked at the forecast, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty decent day. So come out and, uh, and be a part of that, and we'll love to get to know you. Amen. You want to pray and dismiss us this, this evening? Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come and share in your word and speak of you. And uh, we love you, Lord. We appreciate all you've done for us. Thank you for this holy week. We look forward to this Sunday. We look forward to everything that we've discussed this evening. And uh, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come into your, to your house, Lord, and glorify you, lift you up. Thank you for what you've done for us. So I pray for each and every person that's watching this evening, that you would bless them in this time. And I know holidays can be hard sometimes, especially for those that have lost loved ones, but know that there is hope yeah. in Jesus Christ. So I pray a special blessing on them that this would be the Easter, that their loved ones would come in to the fold, those that they've been praying for, that those that they've been longing to come in. So Lord, I pray that you would just help every member of Kingsway Church just invite those that need to be here, that would come and participate in what you would have for us this Sunday. We know it's going to be great. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. We appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to just spend a few minutes with us. And we're praying as we get ready to leave here that God's very best will be yours until the next time that we see you and hope to see you Sunday morning. And we thank you for, for watching tonight. And God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.